This space was designed by a young French architect who lives in Delhi. We went to this wonderful park called Jamali Kamali, which is near the Kutubina. And he looked at the arches, the shape of the arches of the tombs. And that arch became the basis of this building. So if you stand in front of the building, the facade it has this big arch. When you come in, arch runs this way with natural light. This is the design studio, but for the couture, our clients need to come here for the bridal. So basically, this is for the bespoke, the made to measure. And this will move closer to town in, six, uh, in another year to a beautiful new space we design over there. I am India modern. I do not want to be old fashioned. I do not want to recreate. It's no point. You go to the museum, there are many other people who do it. You have to interact and say, okay, this is our culture. This is who we are. How do we use this and live in today's life? I mean, that's the point. I started at the Dune School and as you know, all good fantastic boarding schools are very like much, it's about soccer and cricket and you know, all this thing. And I always sketched and I didn't know what to, you know, like what the hell is this, you know. And in my final year or the 11th, I did these series of sketches all in pencil of these processions, these wonderful wedding processions. And they gave me the best artist prize. And my school, my, my English teacher came and said, great, but you know, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna get in life drawing high fashion models? And I'm like, you know, I don't know. And at that time, Pierre Cardin, who was a great French designer at that time, came to Bombay to do a couture show. And we live next to the Taj in Bombay. And my wife, who's very tall, went and said, you know, she'll be an usher because we needed the money. And they said, oh, Mr. Kar, there comes with four models. Can you come and audition? She got picked and I got to see the show. That's the first time I saw a fashion show. I mean, and I, like, I came out and I said, this is what I want to do. India became independent in 47. And, you know, to get ahead, you had to be westernized because that was the structure of the society. So even if you look at the Maharajas in the 20s and 30s, because they want to impress the Viceroy or whatever, they all tried to be Western and wearing Western dress and, you know, getting fancy motor cars and building beautiful palaces by European architects. Fine, but don't give up your life. Somewhere something went wrong because you were colonized. Today, when a woman comes into something that's very fancy, in a simple handloom sari with some colored beads and the, you know, the symbols of India, to me, She's got class, even before I know her, because she's comfortable. And you can't, that to me is the most essential ingredient of a person, you know. You can wear diamonds, you can wear a big bow, you can carry a Vuitton bag. I'm not impressed by it anymore. I see too much of it. <laughs> so, so we shot this, for instance, on the roof of the building at sunset. Like tomorrow I'm going to the Maharaja of Jodhpur's son's wedding and it'll be like this. Everybody will be dressed up. And you know what? I can't wait because I just want to see, see, see. I'm, I'm not going to have a drink, nothing. I'm just going to be looking because, you know, that's traditional India coming alive. It'll be spectacular. A lot of our fabric becomes surface treated. Where the fabric, we do things. We create textures or we do prints. We have a lot of hand embroideries. We do a lot of surface embroideries. This is done by hand. So that becomes the textile. So I do a top which is something or whatever. This is our thing that we can do anything by hand in this country. It's, it's incredible. If I tell somebody, sit for a day, two years and make a side, they'll sit for two years. They're fine. They think it's normal. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so, I love Jersey because you can drape it and do all sorts of things. I mean, it's wonderful. Uh, I've got a new fabric I'm working with, which I love, called Malka, which is Malmal -mal and Khadi, which is mixed. It's a handloom. I have not liked handloom so far because it's very stiff. I always say it's nice to be woven and worn as a sari, but if you cut it, it's, you know, when fabric is to be cut to be into a jacket or a blouse, it needs a different kind of uh, elasticity, a fabric size. And because all our fabrics in India were made to be draped, they didn't have it. So in the beginning, we used to use it and we do not have any experience. Now everything will be fused and all, but it also then becomes stiff. It loses its give. It loses the power to breathe. And in this climate, you need to have things that breathe. I will only wear cotton. You would show me any of the 5% polyester. I, I can't wear it. My favorite color is beige. 
ecru beige, that Indian sand, that tone. It goes with black, it goes with multicolor, it goes with white. I wear, I wear black because I'm always trying to look thinner. As you know, black makes you look thinner. So I have no choice. <laughs> I think it's been bad. In general, I think it's been bad because half of Bollywood just apes the West in the worst way. And there's nothing worse than that. When they were Indian, they were beautiful. And then suddenly they're going to say, oh, this, oh, you don't know. It's for these poor people in the villages. You know, they don't know. They don't know better. It's their escape. So everything was like this fantasia and dream sequence and tacky clothes. But a lot of Indians dress like that because they are their gods. So if I say that Bollywood's been a good style thing, no. Has Bollywood been good for people's morality? No. And do I think a lot of people in Bollywood have style or just no? Honestly, no. The, the real problem with counterfeiting is that, you know, it's okay, you know, someone makes a counterfeit, I sell, I lose the sale. But what is much worse and happens much more at all these weddings is that all these badly made fakes and someone thinks that's a Tarun Jahalyani, that's what hurts me. That's bad fit, it's bad finish, it's ugly color combination. They say, oh God, Tarun Jahalyani is doing this. That's what hurts, the hurt of reputation. That's what the real heart of counterfeit is. Not that you lose the sale. So now from next season, I start a cheaper line. I said, you know what? If they're all going to copy, I'm going to copy myself. Brilliant. Let's do it. So those samples are there. Half the price to sell in the Will stores. All the jewel t-shirts, everything which I started, which went worldwide. I'm doing it at half the price. I'm saying, you're going to make big PR. Don't buy a copy. Go buy the real thing. I have to say, for myself, to wear the favorite is Armani because it's just super comfortable, beautiful textiles, and it's very understated, so that suits me. I mean, of course, Valentina was beautiful, but I'd say at that time, Versace and consistently Armani. I love Prada the best for shoes, and I love, fantastic. I like Gucci, but it's a little trendy for me personally, you know. Um, but even something as simple as Max Mara, it's beautiful, it's divine, I mean, it's beautifully made, it's, you know, it's not positioned itself up there, but it's wonderful clothing. I'm very lucky to be the first generation, if it's there, it's there. I've told my children I don't want you to work here, because A, they have terrible taste, and they wear soccer jerseys, all these Italian companies, I'm like, you can't, you know, it doesn't belong in here, they're all polyester. It says, I don't know, Real Madrid and this and that, whatever. And I say, if you ever want to work here, you have to go work outside for three years and show me that you understand luxury in India. Only then, otherwise you make your own life. <laughs> <laughs>